what we did in uh, delphi on like uh, i will by, but by at least as end of june what we want to do is we want to categorize these stocks into five different categories uh, uh, one category what we are releasing today and what we are showing you uh, is growth growth model and what we are not showing and what we are still working on is identifying identifying the income model and identifying the value model identifying the safe stocks and and the ipo stocks especially like companies like uh, uber and a lot of people want to trade uber is it good or bad we don't know yet like a, i mean we have to create an ipo model to know a firm answer to understand the story be, hidden hidden story behind the numbers uh, like how we did uh, like how we did for apple right so uh, like another another company beyond meat uh, that we can talk a little bit a uh, little bit uh, when we go into the system and later later i will try to explain the beyond meat what's going on like that's a, definitely an active stock in this current market and i see an upside trend like uh, uh, beginning of this year and there are quite a few reasons why it happened as well we'll talk about that one so income is ma- mainly concentrated on uh, on uh, dividends uh, companies that pay a good amount of dividend and there are companies which pay very high dividend is it good or bad so the question is like uh, is that dividend sustainable model and uh, today's dividend is it good in terms of holding the stock for a better price in future so that's what the small income model will address the value model is more towards like what happened in march uh, most companies dropped around at least 50% in share price so is there a company that i can buy at a value price i mean uh, from a valuation standpoint like exactly how like if i if i value uh, under the value model if i value apple probably it won't it won't be uh, coming up no more than 150 dollar stock I and mean, even though it is trading at $300 but probably um, I need to do the mathematical calculation uh, to be precise but roughly for the for the eps that they are generating right now with the hidden st- hidden story behind and that's exactly what will be taken into the value model to calculate the real value of the stock so uh, does it mean like if it goes back to 180 or 150 to that value price will you be buying in the stock in that model yes so that's that's when like value stock will say like oh, now is a good time to buy the stock safety is in a sense uh, uh, apple comes under safety stock safety high on safety because it still continues to generate a, a, a high pre cash flow model and and it still continues uh, to demonstrate the profit uh, uh, right around 50 60 billion dollars um where like 80 90% of the company's revenue is less than their profit right so definitely definitely this is a safe stock like they are not going to go bankrupt unless they they continue to do further more manipulation or further more uh, financial engineering and to the extent that they cannot uh, revert back right that that's a different story like uh, so i mean like a safety stock will address like a, if we had this model in place uh, back in enron times then Enron would have identified as very high risk. It's not safe. So that's the that's the safety model. So IPO we explained like uh, I mean ninety percent of IPOs fail. Only ten percent of the IPOs are good to look at. So this will quite bra- I mean uh, take away some of the IPOs uh, which are uh, I mean th- this will this this model will discount the market momentum, but it will look at the real uh, story behind the numbers. And, and uh, focus uh, may, uh, helps you to focus on the real num- real stocks. What you need to look at, uh, discounting the market momentum. And there's a lot more. Like uh, there is a lock 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 up period for the IPO, there, uh, where the founders and the venture capital investors, initial investors, cannot sell their st- shares for about six months to nine months. Then when the lock up period ha- expires, that's when they start profiting from that from, from their initial investments. Of course, they initial they are the initial investors. Uh, we we don't mind giving them back some some of the uh, some of the return like what they expect to do they took a huge risk of investing in the company uh, but at the same time as an investor as a secondary investor 
I mean, you don't want to get stuck into the initial momentum and buy the stock and give away money to the founders, right? And you can wait up to the lockup period and you can buy after the lockup period is done. If it's still a good, good IPO stock. So that model will give you that uh, synopsis. So in the going in a little more depth in the growth model, what we look at, I mean, uh, I, this is definitely a proprietary uh, model. Uh, so we are not giving exact formulas and exact uh, criteria, but we, are, we can uh, definitely share the methodology what we are looking at. And here, uh, I'm talking about the revenue growth, how much, what is the trend in the growth? Like for example, Apple, uh, we, discount, we discount certain points. We don't score it high as a, as a very high growth stock as of 2019. But as of 2014, we would have, we would have given a great points because the revenue trend was growing at a, at a more, more than acceptable, uh, more than the industry growth rate, right? And of course, like which industry you are in, like what is the magnitude of the industry, like what, what, what uh, like right now, like expecting a, a huge growth in the airline industry in this coming three to six months is very overkill, right? I mean, so we have to, we have to say like, okay, if uh, Delta has grown 10% and the industry has grown 5%, we would say like, okay, Delta is much more higher score than American or other, other companies, other, other airlines, right? So that's one magnitude. The other thing is like, uh, there is a financial engineering aspect which I showed you demonstrated in Apple, right? But at the same time, like uh, there is a core business for every company and every company is expected to do good on the core business. So they don't have to go into this. If they are continuing doing the good, good business in terms of core business, then they don't have to go into the financial engineering aspect, right? So for that reason, we focus on operational profits, not the net income, because net income is what the EPS. And so we, we, uh, we threw that EPS away in this model. We said we won't even look at the EPS growth, uh, like unlike, unlike several other fundamental analysis and uh, quality models, uh, they use that one, but uh, but we, we threw that away and we concentrated on operational profits. And as well as like uh, how much pre cash flow exists, like uh, in terms of if they want to give it back to the shareholders in, in the form of dividends, or they want to reinvest that pre cash uh, available into the company by another company, or, or maybe like uh, expand into. A, a newer products. I mean, there is a horizontal acquisitions, there is a vertical acquisitions. So uh, to grow into a different, to capture into a different uh, uh, industry, uh, they want to invest sometimes like uh, in certain products like which will take their current products into the newer industry, right? So that's that's exactly what we want to look at uh, a little bit more higher. And of course, like uh, how are they structured from a capital standpoint? Are they Are they under stress? Or are they are they under the, um, uh, very comfortable position? And uh, of course, the debt debt ratios also debt uh, in terms of uh, that's a, in general. If you want to give a, take a loan, and every banker will ask, what is the income and what is your current debt levels? And they look at uh, what is the risk levels, right? Those are same uh, similar risk levels. And of course, like there are few other uh, few other operational elements which we can go a little more in-depth, a uh, little more uh, as we go along. Uh, we'll learn about more. Uh, so once we, once we do this modeling on this methodology, and uh, <clears throat> what we do is we do a, a scoring model which comes up with a, uh, with a certain quantitative figure. Like, uh, uh, so once a quantitative figure is, uh, is achieved, then uh, we do an industry average and we look at the standard deviation across all the ind all the companies in that industry, and and we say like if a bell curve treatment, ideally, if you look at a, if you look at a, any group of hundred people, you bring any group of hundred people, and twenty percent of the people will be height will be more than six feet, or or at a certain at a certain range after. If you divide that into a standard deviation model, that uh, sample set of height of 100 people, uh, around around uh, nearly around 15% percent 
15 percent is what like this this side of it uh, beyond the standard deviation right if i add up this 13.6 and uh, 2.1 and 0.1 and all like kind of roughly around uh, uh, 68.2 percent will be in the middle and the rest of the 30 uh, 38 uh, yeah, 68, right? Uh, 32.8, 32.8 is divided into this, is uh, right side and uh, left side. So that means roughly around, uh, roughly around half of this, half of this side are a good performing companies, A grade companies, and above average is B grade companies. Below average, but not within the bottom category, is C grade companies. And the this. Uh, on the left side of it is is a D grade companies in terms of scoring model based on the score what they got right. So it makes it easy. It makes it easy for us to identify the leaders in the industry. Like if an industry has a hundred companies, and maybe around thirteen companies will come as A, and thirty eight companies will come as B, and thirty eight will be C, and another another. Uh, uh, I mean, 16 companies will be coming as a as a D D grade, right? And we have only so much money that can we can deploy. And as is like uh, any hedge fund, also similar way. So they use a they use a capital allocation model is to 30% uh, in A A grade companies and uh, another 30% in uh, B grade companies. Maybe shorting uh, shorting the D grade companies by using 20% of the capital. And then maybe they are using a a very longer term longer term strategies in terms of C grade companies about uh, 10 20 percent of the companies because because sometimes the C grade company will can turn into a B grade company as well as B grade company can go into an A grade company or A grade company can turn into a D grade company you never know right every hedge fund has their own models in terms of qualifying the stock and uh, identifying the story behind. Uh, uh, behind the numbers, and they, they do go behind the numbers. <clears throat> so, what we can expect in terms of Delta and A grade is Delta and A ground A grade stocks should be less volatile, and they should also have a faster recovery compared to the D grade stocks. Similar way, I mean, obviously, opposite to that is D grade stock, which is more volatile and slow recovery. So, let's take a look at uh, one. Uh, Dimension for the current uh, Delphian customers uh, and subscribers. We have uh, we released these screens today, so you can go to this industry overview. Let's take uh, since we are an Apple, like we can go and look at Apple itself. Like so. <clears throat> first of all, first of all, you can also look at. Uh, Go to the stock overview. You can you can see the profile and which uh, which uh, sector does it belong to and which industry we belong to, and we are using Zach's industry qualification uh, as a consistent uh, model uh, everywhere, <clears throat> and we can also look at uh, look at a brief description of the company, and and. Here or here in this chart, this is exactly what analysts are reviewing the publicly available available numbers. Seventeen of the, I mean, there are there are around uh, eight plus nine and uh, twenty six twenty six analysts covering Apple right now, and seventeen of them are saying strong buys, and only one strong sell, and four of them holds and four of them buys. This is common. I mean, this is common. Like uh, they, they are, they have the same numbers as what we have, and the way we di we dissected Apple in a different way, uh, and we come up with a neutral, neutral. It's still a strong stock because of its uh, overall profitability and overall money that it can generate using the current products. But from the angle of innovation, they are losing innovation, and they are using the financial engineering to uh, make up the numbers. That's our dissection. So I'm I'm slightly neutral to a uh, bearish, uh, more to say, on Apple with the with the current price of uh, 313 model. But the, here you can also see the state modeling, which we can see a little bit later. This is using technical analysis. So okay, so we can come up with that. We can uh, uh, we'll go a little more depth in that uh, 
little later but you can also see you can also see like uh, uh, once once you find these uh, once you find these numbers here uh, which industry does it belong to i can go to sector and i can go to the industry and i can also see like a uh, uh, You go to the Delphian grades. You can see the revenue or you, Apple is making a, a very high market share in this industry, and the competitors are not uh, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft like uh, like how you think. It belongs to the hardware manufacturing industry. It is not a software company. They make uh, hardware products, like any other manufacturing, but they make technology products like phones, computers, and things like that. so so they are compared with uh, the uh, uh, people who make storage cisco and in this particular industry the, those belong to the industry so there are 46 stocks in the industry and and we can also you can also look at the market share comparison the closest competitor is ibm which has 13% share and the next one is hpq hpq is divided into two companies uh, uh, in the recent times one is hpe and the other one is hpq so the cisco comes around 8% uh, right so if you look at uh, this one this company dg is making only about uh, uh, 0.25 billion and like isns is making about uh, um, 100 million company but uh, still delphian graded as a a grade stock so to enable this to enable this because sometimes like what happens is with these small companies they can grow much faster like a, a 250 million dollar company if they grow the revenue by uh, another 100 million dollars or 125 million dollars next year they become 375 that's a 50% growth but do we expect apple to become 50% growth at a 260 billion dollar revenue probably not right so that's why what we did was before we arrive at that bell curve model what you have seen we divided that into two segments one is the small companies which is less than billion dollars and graded graded the bell curve within the small companies and graded greater than billion dollars i mean it, it, it's a, uh, i mean we could do another category as well but it didn't want to complicate so i said like okay greater than billion is one category less than 1 billion is uh, one category so to make it a little more simpler so if you look at these a grade stocks there are only about 1 2 3 4 4 5 6 stocks seven stocks seven stocks here out of 46 as in a grade similarly if you go to the last slide i mean there are about uh, uh, five stocks and the d grade model and and rest of it will be uh, b and c will be equally uh, equally distributed like uh, these are eight stocks here uh, one stock nine uh, 10 11 12 12 1 12 1 b and then maybe 12 uh, 12 13 are uh, on c as well like so so and one other thing is like uh, okay how do i find uh, how do i find the uh, same result and today say great stocks you want to trade if you go to this screener we added indicators in the fundamental sections if you come here like uh, you can say great current growth model a and you can just uh, select if you select all symbols and we in the server we have a thousand stocks covering right now 1200 1300 stocks covering so but very quickly like by end of this month we are working on expanding the covering the whole us market that we can see the whole us market so you can see like uh, 158 stocks and you want to stay within one particular sector you can also say do a sector selection or the, or the industry selection also we want to say like industry computer office equipment So the, I mean, out of that seven or uh, seven stocks, we are covering around five stocks. Like so, mostly like uh, most of them, like we have. Uh, I mean, most of the high grade stocks, we we have the just a uh, system, the system already. So this is how we get to the short list of companies. What you want to focus on, right? So here, I think we are using the TTM TTM model. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, So all these screens and all these newer uh, signals are available for you to use. And we are going to when you send when we send this presentation, we are going to uh, add more screens on how to get to those screens 
that way you can you can practice and you can do look look for yourself for any other stock like which i'm not demonstrating today as well right so <clears throat> let me go back yeah so to understand more what exactly we mean less volatile faster recovery right so we want to see this in action right if you want to see this in action uh uh, this this particular screen what I'm showing is not available publicly, but uh, but any of our uh, uh, strategists, uh, Josh or Sean or myself, can show you like uh, anytime you want to see between a certain dates, because it's not uh, useful every every day perspective. So we didn't feel the necessity of giving this one. Let's say like uh, let's go to the January beginning of this year and till today, and we want to see the bearish model. Let's look at this. So, what I'm uh, technically doing, essentially doing, is uh, let me open the stock chart as well. So, we all have seen like market falling, I mean, starting uh, somewhere around the January. Onwards, right? I mean, from February, February to March, like it's a very big fall. So what we want to see, I mean, the, this this is exactly showing like between uh, February 12th and March 23, uh, the SPX had fallen 35 percent, and Dow Jones has fallen 38 uh, percent. Russell had fallen like more, like 43 percent. This is exactly uh, most of the times Russell falls more than more than like uh, any other market in general. So this, this is the same picture like every every time you see. That's one of the reasons why like uh, measuring vessel is a good indicator for whether the overall market is bullish or bearish or not. So here you are seeing like uh, uh, these numbers. And on the left side, you're seeing like, okay, uh, there are uh, in the market, there are about 716 stocks right now that are graded uh, A grade stocks during that period, during February, February 12th. Right, as of February 12th. So the the stocks that are graded A grade, on an average, fell like 44%, and the B grade, there are about uh, 1,487 stocks in the overall U.S. market, and that has fallen 48%. And C grade stocks, there are about 1,663 stocks, and that has fallen around 51%. And uh, D grade stocks have fallen like a uh, 53%. So this is more or less, more or less like uh, this is A grade stocks are less volatile, but at the same time, as of today, when the when the market did not come back, market is trapped within this. Uh, uh, I mean, if you look at the SMA, market is not bullish yet. So market is trapped between these two numbers. If you look at this, 2998, 3000, there is a big resistance there versus like a 2716. And if you look if you look at EMA 200 also like a 2950, so right at, right at where the stock stopped yesterday, right? So right around this time, this place, there is a big resistance. These lines are big resistance. So for the last almost about a month, since April 23rd onwards, when it entered into this zone, it is revolving around this, so it's consolidating in this in this zone right now. So the moment it breaks one of these two lines, I mean, I, we don't know whether it will break on the upside. And here it, it tried to break on the upside, but it is not able to keep up the momentum, and and, and it it uh, fell down more right on uh, back in the middle of the drops, right. So this is exactly the same action what we expect once it drops this 50 below if if the Right, or or if it continues to grow, like uh, stays above, like this this uh, three thousand uh, and closes above continuously for the next three days in in a raising pattern, that's when like the market is going to go up. I like, can try to test it out, right? But very unlikely because the coronavirus well uh, earnings. I mean, what we heard in the earnings 
is only partial shutdown of march for a lot of businesses and uh, before the impact was uh, uh, impact was magnitude uh, i mean baked into the calculations i mean uh, they already had a full month of uh, january and february a lot of businesses were uh, not much impacted i mean airline got impacted a little bit the earlier than uh, earlier in the cycle but uh, when you look at uh, retail industry uh, even though the coronavirus and the lockdown started in march uh, but uh, there is a lot of buying buying products and uh, that's why you are seeing like retail posting like a very good huge numbers and still we may continue to see that but we don't know that magnitude uh, but the whole of april is shut down and and partial of may is shut down and even though Mar- partial of may is open but nobody is actively booking the hotels for vacations and things like that yeah people who are uh, getting like a little bit frustrated like they are going to uh, beaches for a quick 2 uh, 3 hour uh, fresh air or something like that but it's not much of a huge uh, increase in the business uh, uh business uh, business zones yet like when pe- restaurants are open for dining only for a 22% capacity so that it does not bring bring the hotel chains and the restaurant chains like uh, up to the up to the level of what we can expect in the earnings in terms of quarter 2 right so the quarter 2 results are not not yet fully baked into the pricing and when you looked at this recovery recovery along with the market right they recovered way more than what they are currently valued so from a valuation standpoint stocks are very high valued right now like come I mean, low when i when i when you do the price to the valuation the price is much higher than than what they actually value the stocks like so that's exact phenomenon what we will see and and of course this will only be true when it falls that would be the reason you will see like a lot of articles being written on this one right now they are saying like okay drugs are coming economy is going to go up and things whenever powell comes and or any of the economists comes and speaks market is coming down whenever the medical folks come and speak about virus or about the drug or uh, the hope then the market is increasing so it's a battle between the med- med- uh, the medical medical versus uh, economists and we don't know which way it will it will route uh, it will go out right so so at the same time like uh, what if you are what if you are invested in a grade stocks and and not focus on d grade stocks turn around and then invest only in 44 uh, in the a grade stocks only right so that means they are less volatile even if market comes down so your a grade stocks are going to uh, lose less on an average on an average than the d grade stocks this is one big benefit let's take a, let's let's use the same market scale go back and uh, look at uh, one or two more periods also like so let's look at uh, this one is uh, yeah this one is uh, december uh, october 2018 for those of you who are trading back then uh, will remember that quarter very well in 2018 exactly on quarter beginning exactly on quarter beginning like uh, the decline started and it didn't stop until until december okay so the recovery started in december but we will also give like a little bit more so so what i'm doing is uh, see the market recovered right the market recovered so i'm, I'm giving until until around february and so i'm measuring from between here and here the market recovered to about almost 60 60 70% retracement to the drop to the overall drop right back then so if you measure that so the a grade stock first the market dropped around 20% during that time frame uh, on the spx and the same as those ones also like and like like what we saw the phenomenon like the recent phenomenon russell dropped 27% there right so uh here if you look at uh, if you look at the uh, a grade stocks they drop around uh, 26% b grade is 27% and c grade is 32 and 36 so right uh, right exact like phenomenon if you are on a more of an options trader then we don't concentrate on prices more than uh, less than 20 dollars because it doesn't make sense to 
use options for stocks less than $20, we are paying more for the options in terms of percentage of the option price. So if you look at these also, like it, it uh, follows a similar phenomenon. Within that 1% range, A and B stocks, like they are more or less stable than C and, C and uh, B grade stocks. But if you also look at the recovery rates, right, the A grade stocks recovered uh, almost to a near zero. I mean, whatever the last, whatever the last price is being recovered. But here you are looking at uh, uh, two percent and eight percent. They are degraded easier to recover, like so. And the thing is, like if uh, think this way, if a hundred dollar stock drops to fifty dollars, and to recover back, come back to the same hundred dollars, it need to go back hundred percent, right? So that that log mechanism, the log return mechanism is what you are seeing in this phenomenon. When you are when you're looking at a, at a model and a, a group of a basket of stocks, this is exactly why, why if you are familiar with, uh, I mean, uh, back in 2008 or uh, 2012 or whatever these market drops, if you are invested in, uh, in one of the mutual funds where, uh, or the hedge funds, they're supposed to be hedging their bets and they're supposed to be doing better than us. Because they have they have a lot more knowledge, they have a lot more experience, they have a lot more tools, and right. But if, when you look at statistics, only about 10 to 20 percent of the hedge funds do good, even in bad markets. I mean, or less than less than 10 percent, right? Why? Because they don't they don't do exact hedging, and they don't do it properly. That's one of the reason. And the second reason is like uh, you all also see like uh, for example mutual fund, which is not even a hedge fund. They are purely investing in certain types of uh, uh, stocks, which could be a growth model or this model, the income model or whatever model, right? So when they don't have the grading model, or, or if they don't use any of the grading model in that mutual fund, as a bunch, when they go down, they go down more. But when they come back, when the market comes back, you don't see they're coming back. See, the reason is when they drop 25%, if they have to come back to the come back to the 0% recovery rate, this rate, they have to grow around 32, 35% more from where they are right now, right? So that makes it difficult for D-grade stocks to come back to zero, and that makes it easy for A-grade stocks to come back come back very quickly. That is, a, that is the reasoning behind why the recovery will be quicker in an A-grade stocks. Also, let's take one more period there. Go back to okay, 2015. Yeah, this is a nice one. Okay, so here you see like this uh, August uh, 11. Uh, there's a huge sudden drop in the market, and then a uh, very quick recovery. I mean, you can call it a, a close to a V recovery or a W recovery, but uh, this is this is probably very quickest recovery back to the same point, right? So let's take these two points: 11, 11, 4, 2015. Next. I think I remember, remember the dates properly. August 11. Yeah, here also you can see 18%, roughly around 18% in A and B grade stocks, and C grade stocks is 19%, and D grade stocks is 23%. And even when you when your recovery rate, right, look at recovery rate, this is a 4%. Uh, I mean, A-grade stocks are worth 4% more than uh, by this point. By this point, uh, they recovered more and went into the positive direction. And then uh, B-grade is near zero. C-grade is near zero, but D-grade is not yet. So I think if I can look at uh, all stocks. And the market has fell uh, 12% in a very short time frame. Yeah, yeah, roughly, even if you include all stocks, I mean, uh, roughly the same thing. Yeah, so you get the point. I mean, I'm not going to do further more, but, uh, but uh, the, this is exactly what we did when we are modeling and we make sure 
make sure like about uh, 80% of the rules are met and 80% of the stocks are following the phenomena before we lock down this uh, lock down those rules right any any questions so far yeah shook we had some in chat um if you look at the q a uh, yeah. from AJ, it says does the platform dissect the revenue by hardware and service revenue and their respective growth rates Uh, um, okay. Which question is that? Uh, it says for Apple, oh, in, does the uh, do we dissect you know revenue by different components like hardware services and things like oh, that? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, not yet, not yet. Uh, that uh, technology is not. Uh, we haven't come got to that stage yet, but uh, that is in the plan, like uh, to uh, distribute the revenue into iPad, iMac, and uh, others. Like I mean. Uh, Apple themselves like stopped reporting those uh, unit sales uh, in the uh, for about last three years or so they are not reporting, but they are, but they are broadly combining all of them into products and services. So however way however way companies are reporting in their annual reports, that's what we intend to we intend to develop the technology to that level. And once that that is done, uh, that is done like uh, uh, it will be right here in the platform like. So. In the stock overview itself, yeah. In the yeah, once uh, once that is done, like uh, uh, somewhere here itself, we will do the dissector segmentation. There is a there is a uh, product segmentation, uh, the the reporting segment line line of business, and also there is a geographic distribution, which is a, which is on the roadmap, like which is which we are not done yet. Okay, we also had one about, um, this is from Ram, uh, Seagate is rated as a B and Western Digital is rated as a D. And he says, uh, Western Digital hard disks are much more reliable than Seagate. How do we account for such things in the model? Okay, uh, so here, let's take a look at those uh, stocks once. Did you see that here's a secret? Let me find them. I think it's STX, I think. Yeah, Seagate is STX. Okay, this one. And what is the other one? Western Digital, right? Digital. Easy to do it by saying. Okay. okay, if you're looking at this, uh, this score, right, 59.33 versus like a, uh, 32, uh, yeah, Western Digital is a D-grade stock, like so. Uh, uh, does RAM think like, uh, RAM thinks like Western Digital is more reliable than STX? That's what the, that's what the question is. Well, you said their hard disks are much more reliable than Seagate. Oh, okay. From a product quality standpoint, one is like I mean, yeah. Sometimes the product quality does not mean the financial stability of the company. They might be making good products, but they are not able to sell that uh, effectively. So, I mean, one of the reason like why the D grade stock is basically. So, if you look at this, uh, 15.58 billion, right? Uh, so uh, that's revenue, 15 billion revenue translating into operating income of they're losing money by having their by running their business they're losing 728 million dollars yearly uh, in in by western digital whereas the seagate is making money they are making less money 10.36 billion but their their uh, uh, their profit is about 1.36 so either either the western digital has to use their reliability factor and increase the prices of the prices of the hard disk, I mean prices of the products and increase the revenue. That way they can raise their profits. Uh, they have to do something like uh, the management has to act, do act on this uh, losing the, uh, lose, losing profitability. That's exactly why they are employed. Uh, so we, we can analyze what they can do, but even though we analyze what they can do, but we are not the people who can action that, right? 
so there's no use like uh, so our our point of view is like are they good enough in terms of investment or not when it comes to this one right i mean you can you can do this income analysis yeah so if you look at this income analysis there they used to be 20 billion uh, last year like they dropped re- dropped in revenue so this, this is exactly the problem this probably is exactly the problem here uh, i mean since 2010 uh, the a good growth rate uh, up until up until 2017 and here if you look at this uh, cost of goods goods sold right this is a variable cost so this variable cost is is pretty much almost constant like right? I mean, they are able to grow the revenue but they're not a, they they did not add much of a variable cost right which is good that's what increased their profitability back in 2017 but by the time when they came to 2019 last year we don't know what happened but their their cost stayed the same but they are not able to sell the product so when you come to this gross income it it fell out from 6 used to be 67 billion dollars to around 3.75 billion dollars but they did not reduce the cost so by the time when it comes to this operating million they lost around 2.2 billion dollars in revenue here so uh, and when you, by the time we come to this uh, pay the tax and everything this is the first year they got into a negative negative profit zone right so uh, whereas when we see get we look at the financials yeah so here if you look at they did not uh, grow revenue as much as uh, their their revenue is actually declining actually I mean, pretty much like compared to 2011, 2012, right? Because not a lot of people are buying their products, uh, and they are probably are not in the data center supply, so which is a growing market. But their cost also is manageable cost. So if you look at the same metrics, their operational, their gross income, gross income is pretty much the same, uh, almost. No matter whether they are growing or not, they are they are getting the similar amount of money. and the operating income is about 1.49 and their net income is also the net income is actually is also stable more or less stable like other than these two years right so what we are analyzing is the financial stability of the company and the future growth of the company there's a little more to it like uh, when we, when we go a little more in depth like we we can take these two examples and then we can analyze wdc and cgate as well Uh, Shuk, we had one other question. Is from Ray just about the market. He said, while the market is stalling as per state modeling, we're still bearish on VIX. Does that indicate potential positive for uh, equity prices? Oh, uh, we are still bearish on the VIX. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, bearish on the VIX. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't use much pay attention to the VIX state modeling. uh state modeling on vix particularly like uh, there are very few stocks i would say that one but uh, uh because uh, because truly like uh uh you know truly the vix uh, vix is very fast in moving right and uh, and uh, state modeling uh, is not intended to catch the fast movements but it at the same time it is not, it is it is modeled to design uh to design like uh, don't miss the bigger trends right but at the same time don't take this uh, one day flips one day this side one day that side like uh, we try to minimize as much as possible that's one of the reason like why so uh but at the same time like yeah uh, if you look at this vix chart right yeah state one and state eights are big trends so which is what we can use a little more reliably than than the than the state two and uh, other intermediate stages states on the vix particularly i mean yeah when I mean, truly truly we uh, none of us know what's going to happen in the market uh, until and unless it does these two things i mean it's a it's like a it's almost like a uh, if you go to yahoo finance or market watch or read articles right if today is market is up they'll write positive stories if today market is down they'll write positive stories uh, negative stories so it's almost like that they also don't know like come so nobody knows so the, the the real meat of it is okay we need to look at the growth in eps 
how the how the how the uh, whether the S and P 500 companies together as a bunch are they increasing their profits? I mean, EPS is a good measure for uh, publicly uh, publicly uh, available measurement. Uh, but if you come back to this hidden story model, I forget the hidden story model for a second. But if you look at the EPS growth, uh, EPS growth more or less like I mean, not many companies do the financial engineering like the way Apple did to that extent. And uh, uh, at the same time, every company does some kind of uh, some kind of a, a small uh, financial engineering to the level where they can manage. But but at the same time nothing nothing apple done apple has done is illegal everything is legal and and they did exactly uh, what is accepted by law and what is what is exactly uh, allowed in terms of accounting there's nothing wrong i mean apple did not do any fraud apple did not do any mistake in stating their eps uh, just because they have cash they bought the stocks just because they have the, but as, as a fundamental investor you need is your, your responsibility to look at like that underlying story so if you look at the underlying story on uh, on most of the spx stuff maybe around 50 of them you will find hidden stories maybe 450 you wouldn't find any of them uh, so but all in all when the eps are the operational income what i'm talking about operational income is growing for companies like that right that's what that's when the market will start growing actually uh, otherwise the irrational market will continue like so i mean what happened in the last 10 years itself is a rational market so one other thing you can also look at is in the industry in the industry screen we provided these charts as well so this is exactly uh, the revenue growth uh, for all the companies added together what you are seeing here as an industry this entire industry it, it did it grow or not like so i mean it is obviously in millions So, so you have to convert that into 276 billion. This is what he's talking about. So, as a revenue uh, between 2017 and 2019, it's coming down. As an industry, the whole industry is coming down. The computer manufacturers industry is coming down from a 323 billion. Like so. so, so this this in the same line. Like uh, yeah, we forgot to add operational income. Like actually, if you yeah. So this is the net income profitability what they're declaring. So 2017 was about uh, uh, roughly so they come two billion. Like I think we can go to the screen. Yeah. So this is the net income declared one, right? So this is the trend like what we want to keep seeing for all the companies. So I mean, the entire industry industry profitability is. 64% of the industry probability is Apple profitability. And so these Cisco and Apple, they are making the most profitability for the industry. So from this screen, we can see like IBM. IBM is another 9%. So these three companies together, they are making around 75 to 80% of the profit. The rest of the others are making small profit in, in relation to the industry. They're not able to capture the profitability in that industry. What are the questions you have? Um, well, the other question is, <clears throat> well, there's one long one. It's in the Q and A. Um, if you can pull that up. But the other thing, you know, uh, I think we need to take five for you know people to get drinks, coffee, bathroom break type thing real quick. Sure, sure, okay. sure. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. start at uh, 10:35, and um, it, Ashok, if you can just pull up that Q and A, Dave. Had a, a long question. I didn't want to read it over. Sure, sure. Okay, so we'll be right back. <laughs> 